Hi there, I'm Kim Staley and I wanted to share with you why I do what I do. Because I thought, well, maybe some people are wondering why does she do what she does. Before I get into the why, I want to give you a little background on the how I came to love cats and what I love about cats. So for the how I came to love cats, I was born into the world surrounded by cats and kittens, uh, as well as all the other normal household pets like dogs and guinea pigs, oh, lots of guinea pigs, hamsters, birds, fish, turtles, a rabbit, hermit crabs, I had them all. And I haven't, I've never had kids, but I still have that maternal instinct to raise and care for and nurture something little. Cats have always seemed to find me. I don't know what it is about that, but if there is an abandoned or stray cat and it, if it needs help and I'm in the vicinity, well, that cat's going to find me. And I'm going to have to look at my notes every now and then so that I don't forget anything I want to share with you. If I see a cat, I have to go to that cat, I have to talk to that cat, and if there's any people around or I was talking to someone well before I saw the cat well just forget it I'm gonna knock you right on over to go get to that cat okay not really but you get the picture right so that's the how the what I love about cats is I love how they love to be so close to us at our feet curled up wherever you are at the computer sitting on the sofa at the dining room table or they love to cuddle in my lap even if they don't want to be bothered, they don't want to be touched, they still love our presence. And there's something so calming about that for me. I love how my cats are always happy to see me when I come home. They hear the car pull up in the driveway and they're sitting right there at the door. I can barely even get in the door. Um, they don't judge me. They don't care if I haven't taken a shower yet today, if I haven't brushed my hair, if I'm wearing my ragged old house clothes instead of my go out in public clothes. They love me no matter what, unconditionally. I love about them the eye contact, that gaze, when you lock that gaze with a cat, there's so much love and adoration in their gaze and that I am giving back to them. That is, that's just really something. I love how when I'm feeling sick, or when I'm feeling sad, how they know and they come and they comfort me. I love how they curl up tight against me in bed and their purr. Did you know that a cat's purr has uh, actually been proven to have healing powers? It reduces stress, anxiety. Uh, okay, so now going on to the why I do what I do. Some years ago, I started finding cats or they started finding me, you know, stray cats with litters of kittens and I couldn't just turn my back. I had to help them. I had to feed the mama and feed the kittens and get them all fixed and that's how it started. There was just one place where I was living at the time and there they were in the alley behind the house and so it began. <laughs> uh, then I started to volunteer and the first place was I was a colony feeder and after that I volunteered at an animal rescue that had an average of 250 cats at any given time and then I started volunteering in um, for nonprofit rescues in the cat adoption centers in the pet stores now I wasn't doing all of these all at the same time it was I would do volunteer at one and then go to the next <clears throat> And so what I noticed about all of the cats at all of these places that I volunteered and all the ones that I was finding that were stray is that they all had subpar health. And by subpar health, I mean excessive shedding, excessive fur balls, um, dull dry coats, and the poop. Big, stinky, steamy, soft poop. Uh, skin allergies, scratching itching. Um, of course, a lot of them, most of them had upper respiratory infections when they would come into the rescues. That's just the way it is. And, you know, it wasn't 
just, you would think that it was stress, okay? Stress has a lot to do with it, no doubt. But in the adoption centers in the stores where I was volunteering, there were people coming in who had cats at home who were describing these same subpar health conditions to me about their own cats at home. And then also I pet sit, so I see this quite often in most of the cats that I'm pet sitting for. These subpar health conditions, um, overweight, uh, a mushy feel to their body instead of tone and firm. And the one thing that all of these cats have in common in all of these scenarios that I have experience in is dry cat food. They're all being fed a diet of dry cat food. And what what makes my blood boil is when I go into a grocery store or a pet store and there's just rows and rows and bags of bags of all this dry cat food and all of the deceptive marketing and the deceptive labels and the bright cherry colors, neon pinks and yellows and greens and turquoise blue and all the packages say complete and nutritious. And there's really nothing complete and nutritious about a highly processed food and there's nothing natural, complete and nutritious about dry cat food. There just isn't. And then they started coming out with all these earth toned packages, right? The earth tone colors. So if you are living a natural lifestyle and you want to do the same for your cat, I mean, when those first came out, I was just drawn right to those bags until I looked at the ingredients and, and the labeling says that it's natural. Oh, it's got uh, chicken and um, you see pictures of chickens or fish and chunks of chickens on the packaging and the cat is eating the food. Yum, 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 num, 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 just gobbling it up. There's nothing natural about dry cat food. It will, your cat will survive on it, there's no doubt, but they are not going to thrive. They just are not. That's it's not natural for them because they're carnivores and all their teeth are sharp, they're pointed, they're for shearing and tearing flesh off of bones and for crunching and obliterating raw bones. They have a very short digestive tract so they can process the flesh, the raw flesh, through their system very quickly. And they also have very high acidic strong digestive juices to process that flesh very quickly. It takes human 72 hours to process red meat. It takes cats one hour to get their food through them if it's animal protein that they're getting. So in the last two decades veterinarians have seen such an increase in disease and illness in cats and the main ones are diabetes, the kidney disease, skin allergies, cancer, hyperthyroid, and uh, urinary tract infections and stones blocking their urethra. Extremely tremendously painful for a cat. And these conditions are almost always directly linked to a diet of dry food. And I say almost always because nothing is 100% either way. Genetics can always play in the role too. And you may not know the background of your cat's health, the mother's health or the multiple father's health, but what you can do is if there are genetics playing in it that you don't know about is you can still optimize your cat's health and wellness. And that's why I do what I do. I help cat parents become well-informed, conscious consumers and guardians for their cats using a natural holistic approach with a focus on the most wholesome, nutritious food. And I help cat parents to transition their cats off of dry food to either canned or raw or a combo of the two because a lot of cats are very stubborn and they don't want to make the change. Dry food is very, very addicting. So you may have already tried. You may know someone who has tried to transition their cat off of dry food. Uh, banish the bag, I call it. Banish the bag. <laughs> um, if your cat doesn't want to do it, you might have given up. Or if you're thinking about doing it and your cat won't eat it. The cat's going to just snub its nose, turn around, walk away from you, or just plop down and cry. Go into the drama act. So you're going to get worried that your cat's going to starve. You're going to feel sorry for the cat. So you're going to give up. And so I am there to help 
uh, like a cheerleader, like a coach, to give you tips and suggestions on what to do and just basically to be someone there to talk to about it to help you and your cat get through the transition. I also help your cat to rebuild and strengthen their immune system and organs that have been depleted by a diet of dry food, flea products, vaccinations, and just all the toxins that we expose these little creatures to in our homes without even meaning to. The toxins in the carpet and the upholstery in the furniture and your household cleaning products. So it's very important to strengthen and rebuild their organs and their immune system to help fight off uh, disease and illness. I offer a thriving health discovery session. It's 30 minutes. It's complimentary. I can't say that it will always be complimentary, but it is free at this time. And after this thriving health discovery session, if you decide that you'd like to work with me, then I will help you choose the best Thrive Nutrition program for your cat. So that is it. That there's why I do what I do because we bring these little creatures, these precious little creatures into our lives, into our homes and I believe it's our responsibility to keep them safe and to provide them everything they need for thriving optimal health. To keep them safe from toxins and yeah, that's it. That's what I'm here for. I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.